Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Hales with Transform My Poker and today I'm going to be talking about one of the most challenging aspects of the game for any modern poker player and that is thinking in hand ranges. This may be something you've tried before and you may have struggled with it. This may be something you're currently working on or you may have never tried thinking in hand ranges. Wherever you're at with this, I'm sure there are some tips I can give you today that can help you. This is something that everyone can do and everyone should do because it genuinely can transform your game. It does take practice. So one of the things you're gonna need to do is devote some time to this. Don't expect it to happen overnight. It's not a magic one thing. Make sure you devote some serious time to thinking in hand ranges. This takes discipline. It's something you're gonna to have to remember to do every single time you're involved in a hand. It's not something you do one time and then stop doing. You need to constantly be practicing this. When you're playing in a game, when you're analyzing a game, when you're just observing a game all the time, what's his range, what's my range? Thinking about ranges becomes a habit, but you have to do it every single time. So for some of you, this is gonna be a, a real mindset shift, but I really wanna encourage you all to go for it. The next point here is that you're not gonna be doing this blindly. You are gonna to need tools, all right? If you're an online player, you're gonna be using tools like Flopzilla or other range tools to help you visualize what ranges look like. Visualization is important. If you're a live player, you're still going to need to use tools. So look at what apps are available with different ranges on so you can be actively visualizing hand ranges. The final point on this slide is to say that this is going to get really complicated. So you are going to need to use shortcuts and to simplify some of the information that you are dealing with and trying to process okay and that's absolutely fine that's what the top players do they're not mathematical geniuses all of them not everyone's a rain man they are simplifying processing the simplified information and then coming up with a solution that's what you need to try to do too so for those of you who are thinking about this and are still thinking, oh, it's far too complicated, it's far too complicated, don't give up. Honestly, you can do this. So there may be 1,326 possible starting hands, but we're going to narrow down on them really quickly. So for starters, pre-flop, when someone makes a decision, they're, they're not usually playing 1,326 hands. Sometimes they're only playing 50 or 100 or 200. Sometimes they're playing more than that. But we need to be reducing this number as the hand progresses. Sometimes we can get to the turn card and we can pinpoint five hands that they might have. Um, but what's really important is we, we are gradually working through the hand, narrowing the number of hands in their range as we progress through the action. The best thing to do is to just group the hands into categories. And we're gonna look at this in a, in a minute on a slide, what, how we might go about doing this. So on, on this slide, we're looking at Equilab, which you can download for free from pokerstrategy.com. And this helps with just standard ranges and equity. In, in this slide you're looking at, we can see a, a cutoff steel range of 29% and there's 386 hands in that range. So that would be our starting point pre-flop if somebody were raising from the cutoff and, and this is the, the, the hand range that we put them on. And then through the hand, we would narrow down from there. This slide shows Flopzilla. It's just a screenshot. I am not going to be doing a Flopzilla tutorial, but if you are going to take this seriously, you should invest some time with this product. It's absolutely fantastic. What you're looking at here is 
one snapshot of a uh, flop, which is Jack 97. We're holding Ace King, which you can see in the dead cards, and the preflop action is gone. We have three bets on one, and they've called the three bet. So over on the left, you can see the range for calling a three bet, which I've entered here as 9.4% or 102 combinations of hands. And you can see what that looks like. And there aren't that many hands, right? I've not included aces, kings, queens, and ace, king. I might have done, but I've not included them because our opponent only called the three bet. He didn't four bet. He could perhaps still have ace, king, or queens, but he's unlikely to have aces or kings. So this is the range I've put in for our opponent's call three bet range. I'm not going to talk about position. I'm going to try and keep this nice and simple. Um, but what we see in the middle of the screen just to the right there of the, the flop jack 9-7 is a list of the possible hands that our opponent might be holding into categories. And we can see he's going to have top pair here almost one in three times, 32.4% of the time. That's a really high percentage to be holding top pair. He's going to have a set 8.8% .8 of the time. He's going to have nothing at all, 11.8% or just ace high, 23.5% of the time. So he's going to have quite a weak hand about one in three times, and he's going to have a piece of the action uh, two out of three times. Some of those hands are going to be gut shots. Look at the high percentage there, 44.1% of the time he's going to have a gut shot draw on this Jack-9-7 board. In other situations, a gut shot's gonna be highly unlikely. The more you practice with this, the more you see these patterns of what types of hands he's likely to be holding. We can also see in the bottom right-hand corner the equity of our hand against the equity of our opponent's range. And you can see our equity is down at 38%. Not very strong for ace-king at this point. This is not a good flop for our hand against his range. He's doing much better than us. Now, if we were doing a, a full video on this, we would then enter the turn card. We'd go through the action. We'd think about his range on the turn, eliminate more hands from his range, and continue to narrow down on what hands we think he might have. So this can be really illuminating and can be a massive help to your game. Now, when we're considering our own hand against our opponent's range, we, we want to be considering our hand against different categories in our opponent's range. This can be a part of the simplification process for you. So if you think about the strength of your hand right now on the flop or on the turn or wherever you are in the hand and compare it with the different hands in your opponent's range. So how many of those hands are you beating? If you've got top pair, how many are you beating? If you've got ace high, how many hands are you ahead of? Sometimes it's going to be a lot of hands, sometimes it's not going to be very many. How many hands are you clearly behind against? And then how many hands is it roughly equal? And assess your overall equity based on the answers of those questions. So if there's loads of hands that you're clearly beating, you're going to have really strong equity. If there's loads of hands you're, you're miles behind against, you're going to have really, really low equity. And if it's equal most of the time, then you're going to probably be between 40 and 60% equity. That's really important. It's really revealing. Continue to go through this process through the hand. You can do some fairly accurate equity assessment by asking these very, very simple questions and categorizing your opponent's hands. So for my final slide on uh, hand ranges, I just want to reaffirm to you that this process gets a lot easier over time. When you first start off, it is very tricky. I remember it feels like one of those things you just want to throw your hands up in the air in despair. Honestly, 
push through the pain, it gets easier. The other point, and I don't say this very often with anything, because I, I, I do aim for per perfection in a lot of the things I do. There are times when that is counterproductive. And when you're thinking in hand ranges, it's just, it's so tricky that trying to be too precise can, can hold you back. So be satisfied with good simplifications. Don't always aim to be absolutely perfect. If you can, I mean, that's great, but honestly, I recommend going for the simplified processes, categorizing, and you'll find you get more reward that way. And my final point, obvious really, but if you do this and you do it right, you will become a far, far better poker player. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to take your poker to the next level, then click the link underneath the video. You'll come over to our site. You can sign up by email and get your hands on a free training resource that will get you improvement in your game tonight. Just click that link under the video to get it. Now, if you've enjoyed this, then please do let us know by liking the video and leave a comment. If you've got a question for us, we'd love to hear from you. And if you're enjoying these videos, let's make this relationship official. You can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you'll be the very first to know when we publish a new video or new lesson designed to help your game. All right, thanks again for watching and remember to run good because that's the hard part.